Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. Today, we have Todd Vaziri on the couch. This is a very historical moment for us in the show because Todd is the first active ILM member that we have had here. Todd has had a hand in some of the most iconic shots in the past 20 years. That trailer shot that you remember from that one movie? Yeah, it was probably him. This is the first time we'll have ever seen TIE fighters in an atmosphere. Mm. He's gonna break down some of these moments from Star Trek. One of the things that was so great about this shot is that it is extremely grounded. Star Wars. Real quick, has anyone ever seen this before? No. <laughs> this is exclusive. <laughs> what? Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Oh, we're kicking it right off with episode three. Wow, okay. Go to the Mustafar system. As a percentage of how much work he did on this movie, was most of it in the Mustafar system? I think for me, yes. I was mostly hanging out on Mustafar with the lava, very hot, very sweaty. <laughs> 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 Lots of drama. So what you're seeing here in Mustafar is a combination of basically every technique that we would have available to us. Yes, the actors are against a, a blue screen because there's no real set that we could possibly build that would do all this stuff. <laughs> but the lava, the set, it is a combination of computer graphics. It is a, a bunch of miniatures. The lava down there is a combination of computer graphics and miniature lava. What was the lava? Surely it wasn't actually yeah. lava. <laughs> <laughs> the lava in certain shots was this methicil concoction that they came up with. Like basically the stuff that's used as filler for shakes. Oh. Oh, okay. They had to do so many tests for motion, for movement, how thick, how viscous it should be. It's all underlit from the bottom hmm. because it's semi-translucent. And they realized this is the best way to control how bright the lava is, how fast the lava is. We have to shoot at different frame rates. We have to shoot at different scales to get all this stuff to work right. I mean, it was, it was a remarkable achievement. Then we get into the computer graphics, which are uh, water simulations and stuff that was headed okay. up by like Willy Geiger and stuff like that. Uh, so like the, those big splashes and eruptions of lava flying up, those are the simulations. Those are not the simulations. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> That's the third way we did some of the lava, <laughs> which is Mount Etna just happened to have been erupting in oh. Sicily. Lucas said, hey, let's send an, a camera crew over to Sicily and film some stuff. And not just any camera crew, Ron Fricke, <laughs> one of the most amazing motion picture photographers. If you've ever seen Baraka, wow. everybody should go see Baraka. Oh, Baraka's amazing. Okay. Baraka, it is okay. absolutely stunning and beautiful. Ron Fricke and his team shot Lava blast. So that's real lava right there going that, <laughs> that blast on the right uh, is real. The silhouette shot that comes up later when their lightsabers clash. Those are all real lava blasts wow. on Etna in Sicily. That silhouette shot is an iconic shot. It's like the shot I remember from this entire Mustafar sequence. That's really great. Uh, thank you for saying so. We have computer graphics installation back there. I believe Brett Northcutt painted that sky back there. We have some computer graphic smoke and real smoke. I added tons of real smoke in this shot. But I'll tell you one of the hardest things about this shot, technically, was how to get those lightsabers to read against the lava. Oh, oh my God, you're right. I have That's struggled with that myself so many times. It's like, here's a bright thing in front of a bright thing. Yeah. It's all just gone. Yeah, lightsabers in, in this era, they are additive. They, they are sources of light. How do you give the feeling <laughs> of a blue, two blue lightsabers against a super hot, you know, almost as bright as the sun light stars back there. <laughs> I'm, gonna take, so. I'm, I'm gonna take a guess. Because it seems the only thing that is actually white is the lightsaber. All of the lava is nicely exposed. Again, this is pure speculation, but then also just kind of dialing up the blue uh, glow on the lightsabers. It is a little bit of dialing up the blue, but the blue combined with the red comes up with some very unpleasant colors that are very okay. non-Star Wars-like. <laughs> and it's basically like creating all these mats around the lava to cheat the saturation of the lava behind it okay. so that the blue becomes prominent. And I'm also being as careful as I can to make sure at the beginning of the shot that you still see some beautiful, clear 
blue lightsaber, mm -hmm. and eventually it gets wiped away with maybe a more amorphous lightsaber, but the persistence of vision, I'm hoping that <laughs> at the beginning of the shot, you're just, oh yeah, of course they're blue lightsabers. Carries it's, it through, it's yeah. gonna work. So are you actually taking the glow from the lightsaber and basically using that as a mask to change the color of the lava right beneath yes. the glow of the lightsaber? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so if you were to turn off the lightsabers and uh, see a little bit more of like the raw original plate, you would actually see these gray swishes going through the lava where the lightsabers <laughs> would be. That is clever. I like that. Wow. I had no idea that they were going to use this shot in like the marketing and stuff. Oh, really? It's like, you know, they. It was like one of the big trailer I, shots. I, I'm glad they didn't tell me. Do not tell me when something's gonna be used so heavily in the marketing because I do not need that pressure. I'm having, I'm having a hard enough time just struggling through this shot and making it photo <laughs> real. It is so hot to be that close to lava. <laughs> They're force pushing the heat away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great how they can multitask. That's some good headcanon right there. I love it. Oh wait, you did Anakin on fire? I burned that kid up. <laughs> Fortunately, third degree burns don't hurt. And <laughs> no. So the lava we're seeing underneath Anakin there, is that more of the... Methacil. Methacil. Yeah, that's stuff that was shot on stage. So here's some of the elements that were shot on stage. Real quick, has anyone ever seen this before? No. <laughs> this is exclusive. <laughs> what? This is amazing. I, I wanted to bring you something special. Oh, that's this dude, is, this Christmas is in history. July. Yeah, you, so you're seeing like this particular pass is solely for the interactive light. The glow, okay. Of the lava onto the berm. So uh, I wouldn't even use this berm. I would just use the luminance of that berm. It's like a screen or ad mode onto the, like the other berm then? Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah, but you can totally is... see the scale of the miniature here. Yep. Like the entire hill that they're on is about the size of a dude. Every single one of these Mustafar shots has a suite of passes like this that the compositors had to deal with. We had a really great team, Pat Tubach, Mike Conti, uh, amazing leads, amazing artists, and, and hopefully nobody's even thinking about that stuff. They're no. just thinking about Anakin and Obi-Wan and danger. But when, when the fire first ignites, it was like kind of satisfying actually. It was like <laughs> Yeah. All the fire you're seeing is practical fire that was shot on stage. Do I see a bone there? Uh, there's a tiny little bone there. I mean, I, <laughs> I think when we got to the point where somebody said that looks like the end of a stogie, like a cigar, uh, I was like, okay, I think we're there. Uh, <laughs> we cannot go any further. So we went through a lot of iterations on that. So our stage crew filmed various pieces of wood and uh, a sphere, almost like a basketball, almost puppeteering the gross movements, hmm. the biggest movement of his arm, right. the biggest movement of his head. And we just let the cameras roll and we tried to record as much as we could. We knew we were going to be getting thousands and thousands of frames of this. And I was going to look through all that footage for the best pieces of footage, finding the best little bits, like when his hand is up and, and then his hand slams back down. I had to make sure that I picked a piece of this footage that would work. I imagine he goes through costume changes over the course of the sequence. Like he starts out, he's got all his hair, but by the end of the sequence, he's got like no hair. Basically there's Hayden in the costume and then there's Hayden in the makeup and okay. there's nothing in between. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, so we had to figure out a way to disguise that in the sequence, how to make that work. I really wanted to show off the detail in his shoulder that the makeup that. people did, yeah. which is static. There's no interactive light on it at all. There's no real fire. So getting a good track of that stuff and putting in uh, burning steel wool elements and using the contouring of the makeup to try to set it back like in, so it almost feels like he's internally burning at that point. I was like, look, okay, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if this is gonna work at all. It might look ter absolutely terrible. And like the that. first or second take looked so great. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I hope they like this. <laughs> I'm seeing so many different smoke elements. How many smoke elements are there? Because I'm seeing like little wisps here, little wisps there. I use a bunch of different elements from, you know, action to the effects and whatnot, and they have like the little wisp, but then if you want to fill out a whole shot, you have to use like dozens of them. Is that what you're doing here? That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, you can see all the different smoke elements, Count fire them up. elements. <laughs> Woo. 
That's a lot. But you know what's I really cool him. about this at the same time? Like, it's a lot of work, but there's nothing going on here that you just you can't just do on your computer with After Effects right no, now. No. But kids out there, don't don't play with fire, please. Just be <laughs> careful. Just do it in CGI. How do you feel about Star Wars prequel memes? I've seen so many memes of people roasting marshmallows on their grill, <laughs> and, you know, with the audio of that scene. Bring balance to the force. <laughs> Please continue to send it to me. I think it's wonderful and hilarious that people are still thinking about this movie all these years later. That sequence did have an effect on people, and um, it's something I'm, I'm really proud of. The soul is completely gone. It's impossible to love my son. Anime Rock, Paper, Scissors 2 just dropped on the Corridor YouTube channel. After you finish watching this episode, maybe consider go checking it out. One, two, three, two! So you worked on 2009 Star Trek. Yes. The Kelvin timeline. <laughs> I enjoyed this movie. This yeah, was too. really fun because I hadn't actually ever been into Star Trek growing mm -hmm. up. And so this was kind of like one of my first big introductions to yeah. it. And I loved it. It's kind of a big shot. Yeah. Another iconic trailer shot. Just, you know, we need your iconic trailer shots. I guess everyone just calls up Todd. So <laughs> One of the things that is so great about this shot is that it is extremely grounded. Mm -hmm. We all know what construction sites look like. I love construction. <laughs> it's rooted in reality. This is a plate of Chris Pine on a motorcycle in a field. And a lot of those tanks in the mid-ground are actually there in the photography. Oh, okay, I wondered, yeah. A real dolly, you know, real camera move. This is a render of our enterprise that Tom Fee just did that then our environment supervisor, Chris Stosky, would then paint over and... Okay, hold up. Sorry to interrupt. Sure, sure. That's a full finished, fully formed ship that we're seeing here, but all of the, the construction details, the inside of the ship was painted onto yeah, that? Yeah, right. We, oh we, we, we spent okay. all the effort making a finished, complete, beautiful enterprise, and we decided that running a render of the enterprise and then having it be an elaborate, animated matte painting after the fact was the smartest way to do it. It's really cool. And that, that was the basis of the whole thing. So you have these really tall construction lights on the right side of the frame, and anybody that's shined a camera with a lens at it at a light tends to notice that you the lights get flipped and they appear in reverse on the opposite side of the frame, but very dim. So you have a big tall stack of vertical lights on the right, then you have the flipped lens flare version of the stacks on the left that have the inverse motion and jiggle and bounce. Is that an effect or was there actually tall lights on the set? There are no lights on the set. That is something I put in and I fought so hard to keep in. I fought so hard to keep in. Did I validate you in. just now? Very much so. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mean, also, no. also the, you know, millions of people. JJ liked it too. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess he's better than you. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. of course but, he liked it. <laughs> but it's one of those things that lend to the, the authenticity of it. And it's, it's hopefully not showy, but that is exactly what it is. And it is a lens flare. It's the inversion uh, flipped and flopped of those lights, which are, uh, ostensibly aimed right at camera, and you would actually get that stuff. I only have a mountain of photographic evidence to show <laughs> that this happens. And uh, so, uh, Ro Roger Gayet and Russell Earl, thank you for letting me keep that in. We got it in front of JJ, and he liked it. So, the whole shot's lovely. It's a cool shot. I, Chris did an amazing job on the painting. Tom Feejus was Mr. The Man in Charge of the Enterprise. Uh, and, and we get to show it off on the last shot of the movie in all of its glory. I've got nothing to fight for. I think the same director for both Star Trek and Star Wars does feel sacrilegious. <laughs> it's also great in dailies when somebody accidentally says the Enterprise or the Falcon or vice versa. <laughs> um. There we go. Woo! Mm. How much of this shot is real? Is that like an actual real shot of the sun overlooking like clouds and mountains, or is it all CG or The synthetic? mountains are based on some photography. The clouds are based on some photography. It's essentially a synthetic shot. We, we altered it enough so that it's, yeah, absolutely. it's, it's all CG. Can you elaborate on what you mean by synthetic? Synthetic in that it's made from nothing. <laughs> it's made from, and that can be computer graphics. It can be a model or whatever, but I'm just saying something that is not one-for-one -one live action filmed in front of a camera. Not gonna lie, I hadn't really heard that 
term in this context before, but I really dig it. I think I'm going to have to yeah. use that myself. Because it is, uh, if you if you want to be precise and you're using the term computer graphics or whatever, that's great. Go ahead and do that. But to me, synthetic is a catch-all to say this was constructed. This yes. was created. I love this it. Is, yeah, not off the shelf. What inspires this shot? One of the things that JJ wanted to do with The Force Awakens is to rely on the iconography of Star Wars as we know it, but in different uh, contexts. This is the first time we'll have ever seen TIE fighters in an atmosphere. Mm, what right. does that look like? What does that feel like? Where's the, where's the heat ripples? Where's, where's the haze? Where's the everything about it? How do they fly? So that's something Paul Cavanaugh, the animation director, had to deal with. And then I had this idea of like, okay, these TIE fighters, it's like, well, what's keeping them up? And I was like, wait a second. They, there's a power source. There must be some exhaust or something. Could they be doing some exhaust like out the bottom of the, the bulb? And I asked around, I asked Pablo Hidalgo, the, the big wigs at uh, Lucasfilm, can I do this? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, do it, man. Can I What's dictate it? the canon of how TIE fighters work? Go for it. Yeah, I thought TIE fighters stood for twin ion uh, yeah, fighters. Ion sure. Is, 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 is <laughs> as well. Yeah, no, I don't totally. know. So um, in this particular version, you could see it most on the, on the ones on screen right. And it comes up in dailies, and everybody's really happy. And they're like, oh, oh, it's going to be in that first trailer. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. I'm like, I'm so proud. A couple days later. Hey, Todd, it's not in the trailer anymore. We're in a slightly different direction for the trailer. It's like, oh, that's a real bummer. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, they're, they're playing with the edit, and it's also not in the movie anymore. Oh. What? And I was devastated. I'm like, I put so much into it, and it's not in the movie. Many months later, somebody comes up to me and whispers, hey, I think they're using it in the international trailer or something. I'm like, uh, yeah, don't, don't get my hopes up. Don't get my hopes up. Sure enough, it was in the international trailer, and people really liked it. And, and it was the, the masthead and banner of all these articles and stuff. And then we got the call, you know, oh, they're moving some stuff around. It's back in the movie. <laughs> I cannot take this. This is too much. My heart cannot take this. But it is every artist's dream that has ever had an omen to have it come back. And it, it happened to this wonderful shot. And it also gave me a chance to go back in and maybe do some things because I had to change it for continuity reasons. So if you go back and look at the trailer version and you look at this version, they're slightly different. But here's a lesson, kids. Maybe you shouldn't go back and adjust stuff because I feel like the trailer version, on the screen left of TIE Fighter, you could really prominently see its heat ripple in the trailer version. And here I blew out the sun a little bit too much. Maybe it's more natural or whatever, but I kind of miss seeing it on that TIE Fighter. <laughs> you know, I'm a little regretful. <laughs> so it was a roller coaster for that shot. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so thrilled that people like it. I'm really proud of it. But it, boy, behind the scenes, I was like, and stomach going up and down. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story. The culture at ILM is the ideas can come from anywhere. And anybody can, can speak up and, and, and say their piece and, and have an idea for a shot or a technique. Frequently, that's what you see on the screen. Hmm. It's something I'm very proud of, of the culture at ILM. And that's what makes it never, ever boring. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and knowledge and experience with us here today and with all of our audience. I didn't realize how much of a trailer guy you are. You are literally the trailer guy. <laughs> like, I love trailers. It's like, I could just see them behind the scenes being like, yeah, we need a shot. Who's gonna take care of it? And it's like, you already know who's gonna take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Todd Vaziri who's gonna take care of that trailer shot. But don't tell him yet. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me, don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. You're very well spoken about visual effects. Um, if people wanted to hear more from you, see what you've been saying, like stuff you post, where, where should they follow you? Uh, well, uh, check out uh, tvaziri.com or just go to the movies. You know, go, please see movies, go to the, on the big screen. Guys, don't forget, we have a whole nother YouTube channel called Corridor, and we just dropped our most ambitious project of the year. Anime Rock, Paper, Scissors 2 is out now. You can click on the link on the screen or in the description. Go check it out. Thank you so much. And to all of you, thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to see you guys at the next one.